So what we want to take a look at is how we can make selections in an improved fashion using Photoshop CS5. There are some new features in CS5 that make selecting an image like we're looking at now a heck of a lot easier. I'm working with a document called model underscore bkg.psd, which is located in your resources folder that you can download from the site. Now what we want to do is we want to be able to isolate the model. And you'll notice that the model has strands of hair. And behind her hair is a white solid background. Ideally, what we want to do is replace that background with a pattern background. And in fact, you'll see in the layers panel, I do have that background layer. If you turn off the visibility of the model layer, you'll see the background that we want to add to this image. So the name of the game here is making a good selection. So when we do select and isolate the model, we can remove the white revealing this new background. We're going to look at a new feature inside of Photoshop that allows us to refine our selections in a much more powerful way than we ever could in previous versions of Photoshop. So the first thing that I'd like you to do is highlight one of your selection tools and make a crude selection of the model. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight the quick selection tool. So with this tool selected, I'm just going to click and drag. And you want to be careful. You don't want to get too close to the white edge because if you do, you're just going to end up selecting that entire white area. So I'm pretty happy with this selection, but obviously it's not perfect. We can see quite a bit of hair that's outside of the selection. And there's also some areas inside here of the model that we're not selecting that, of course, needs to be selected if we are going to, in fact, get rid of the white and replace it with this new background. So what we want to do with this selection tool highlighted is come up to the Options bar and we want to click Refine Edge. So go ahead and select that. It opens up the Refine Edge dialog box. Now, if you've worked with this dialog box in previous versions of Photoshop, you'll notice it's pretty similar, but there's some new features, and those are the features that we want to talk about. All right, so first of all, what we're doing is looking at this model with the layer in the background. If you access this View menu, go ahead and select it, you'll see five of the features that were there in Photoshop CS4, but two new features that are there in CS5. So. Most of these are self-explanatory. If you go ahead and select Marching Ants, you'll see the Marching Ant selection that we were looking at before we got into this dialog box. There's also On Black, which can be very helpful in cases where you're going to be getting rid of the white area and putting her on top of a higher contrast background. Or even in our case, where if we come over to On Layers, the layer that we want to reveal is pretty light. So it's hard to see our selection in its entirety. Do we have this area selected properly or not? It's hard to tell with this on layers option highlighted, but it is a new layer and it's extremely helpful when compositing images. There's also a reveal layer, which is going to show you what the image looks like essentially without the mask. So in our case, we're going to stick with on black for now. What we want to do is we want to get the best selection that we can, and then we'll take a look at how this model looks against the new background. So you can see that the selection really isn't the best. So we have a couple of different options here for making this selection a little bit better. First of all, what we want to take a look at here is the edge detection section. That's a mouthful, edge detection section. With that said, what we want to do is work with the radius. Now, what the radius will do is bring back more detail of the hair. If we go ahead and click and drag this, and just to look at this as an example, we're going to make this pretty extreme. As we do this, we can see quite a bit of the hair coming back into focus, essentially. One of the problems with this is we're losing some detail in the skin tones of the model. If I come over here and show original, you can see that the model skin tone is far more crisp and vibrant than what it is if we have an edge detection radius pumped all the way up to the most extreme value. So what we want to do is we want to find the balance between setting a proper edge detection and having more hair detail come through, but not compromising the rest of the image. So what we want to take a look at, essentially, is what's happening when we're dealing with this radius option. The radius edge is going to determine the thickness of a border that's created, and that border is being used in either side of the selection. What we want to do within that border 
is essentially have Photoshop mask the edge refinements in a way that allows us to see more detail in the hair without sacrificing the rest of the image. So what am I talking about in terms of this border? Well, you can take a look at the border by simply selecting Show Radius. So what we have here is a fairly thick border around the hair, and that's exactly what we want. But that same thickness plays through here in the shoulders. And so because this border thickness is just as thick around the shoulders, we start to lose quality within the model skin tones. So to avoid that, what we would want, ideally, is a much thinner border here while maintaining a thicker border around the model's hair. And that's exactly what this Smart Radius button does. If you go ahead and select that option, you'll notice that the border thickness changes substantially around the shoulder area of the model, but we still have a thicker border edge around the model's hair. So let's go ahead and turn off Show Radius. Now what we want to do is continue to refine this selection. One of the problems here is we still have a lot of white in this area, and we want to get rid of that white. Over here, inside the Refine Edge dialog box, you'll notice we have a couple different tools. These tools are for refining the radius of our selection or erasing those refinements. So we're going to go ahead and highlight Refine Radius tool, and we're going to come in here, and you can change the size of your brushes using the bracket keys on your keyboard. You can make the brush size whatever you need it to be in order to make this work properly for you. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag in the white areas. And what it looks like I'm doing is it looks like I'm getting rid of the selection. I'm basically ruining it. I'm adding white. But once you let go of the mouse, you'll notice it is, in fact, removing that white area. So I don't want to spend a ton of time in here because this is simply a demonstration. But obviously, on your own, you would spend quite a bit of time being careful and making sure you're selecting exactly what you want to select. Now, if you do something and make a mistake, for example, you come in here and you, you drag on the model and you decide that you really don't want to add to the radius in that way, well, what you could do is come back, select this tool, and you could erase any refinements that you did make. But in this case, I'm pretty happy with what I've done. So the last thing that you may want to do to soften up some of these selections a little bit Maybe drag the slider for smoothing over just a tad. A lot of times when you're going to work with the smoothing option, you can also work with the contrast option. You can also shift the edge a little bit. Notice, it's, again, it's changing that radius selection. I don't want to talk about these adjustments so much because they were available in CS4. But what I do want to point out is another new option inside of CS5, and that's the decontaminate colors. If you take a look at some of the hair strands here, there's contamination within that hair. The contamination is the original background color. So if you go ahead and select this option, you'll notice, if I drag it all the way to the right again, the most extreme value, you are decontaminating those color values. Now, I've done it to a point where I've really destructed the detail of the hair, so you don't want to take it that far. I'm just going to bring it back to the 50% range. And again, it doesn't look perfect, but Consider what we're putting in the background. We're not trying to place this model against a black background. What we're trying to do is place this model against a lighter background color. And if you come back to the view section like I just did and switch the view back to on layers, you'll notice this looks pretty good. If you come over and before you click OK, look at the output to option in this drop-down menu, you have a couple different options in terms of how you're going to output this selection. You can output it as a new layer, a new document. In this case, we're going to create a new layer with a layer mask. So we're going to leave that default option highlighted. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. Once you click OK, if you take a look at the image, the selection looks pretty darn good. Right now, I'm at 50%. But if I come over and highlight the zoom tool, and I zoom in to the model's hair strands, all the way up to 100%, you can notice you've preserved a tremendous amount of detail within the hair, yet you were able to extract the solid white background, allowing you to place this new background color or pattern behind the model. And you could never do this that quickly using some of the traditional tools in previous versions of Photoshop. So the Refine Edge dialog box really gives you a lot of power in terms of making precise selections a lot quicker 
and a lot easier than you were able to do in previous versions.